is your name, please? My name is Alice Carroll. What is your name, please? My name is Alice Carroll. What is your name, please? My name is Alice Carroll. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Alice Carroll and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Conyer. Thank you very much. Thank you and a very good evening to you. This, as you know by now, is a game of deliberate misrepresentation wherein four presumably smart people try to find out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. To tell the Truth is brought to you each Tuesday night by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is John Cameron Swayze. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is Hyde Gardner. Now, these three people all claim to be Alice Carroll. Of course, only one is the real Alice Carroll. The other two have assumed that identity. And of course, they do not have to stick to the truth. Now, panel, in front of you, there is a copy of an affidavit. Will you please follow along while I read it? I, Alice Carroll, am a former model, now living in New York with my husband and our two children. My husband is a detective with the New York City Police Department. I am wearing a mask because my job forbids my identification in public. I am a store detective in Gimble Brothers Department Store. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Alice Carroll. Now we get on with our game, and it's time now to play our game. These people, remember, panel, all claim to be Alice Carroll, store detective. Remember, only one, only the real Alice Carroll is required to answer your questions truthfully. Now, each of you will question until you hear this signal. And at the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to make up your minds which one, in your opinion, is the real Alice Carroll. Let's start our questioning tonight with uh, John Cameron Swayze. John? Number three, your husband is a policeman. Mm. That's right. When does the policeman take off his gun? When he goes to sleep. Number one, what would you say to that? Yes, when he comes home. Number two? Yes. Number three, give me a common ruse of a shoplifter in your store. A common ruse or device of a Somebody shoplifter? Somebody comes in and they steal something. Give me a, a real common ruse that a woman would use. Well, she'd come in and uh, put things under a coat. Is that what you mean? That's what I mean. Number one, have you anything to... Uh, give me an example, will you please? Well, many times she will slip something into her handbag or into a shopping bag that she's carrying. Number three. Sorry, John. Kitty Carlisle. Number three. When I go to the front door of a department store with uh, a pair of stockings in my hand to match a color or a scarf, or who is watching me? Well, I don't think anybody would be watching you. Number two. If I kept on going, what would happen to me? If you carried out the scarf and the... Uh, yes, if I just kept walking. Then we would follow you. And then what would happen, number one? Well, you would be arrested outside the store with the merchandise in your hand. Hi, Gardner. Number one, are there more women shoplifters than men shoplifters? Generally, yes. Uh, why? Well, <laughs> women have more places to hide things. <laughs> All right, number two. <laughs> number two, what does the name Charlie Eckhouse mean to you? What is what? The name Charlie Eckhouse mean to you? It doesn't mean anything. Number one, what does the name Eckhouse mean to you? Number Nothing. three, do you know who Charlie Eckhouse is? I've heard the name. Uh, do you uh, uh, know what famous comedian once uh, had a mother who was a New York department store detective, a job similar to yours, number three? No, I don't. Polly Bergen. Uh, number two, uh, to your knowledge, what is the largest object that's ever been shoplifted? Well, this did not happen in our store, but uh, among our protective department, it said that the largest object stolen was a boat. A boat? <laughs> did they actually get away with it? Uh, well, there were two men who came in in shirt sleeves as if they were moving it, 
And they probably would have, but they came back for the oars. They were... <laughs> John Cameron Swayze. <laughs> <clears throat> Number two, if you get a thief, what do you do? Tell me specifically. If I have a thief? You catch a thief. Uh, I follow them first and watch them carefully. I usually don't apprehend anyone until they have gone outside the doors of the store. So you say I'm... usually. Can you apprehend them in the store? Oh, yes. Oh, that's, you can do that and still arrest them? Yes, sir. Number one, is that correct? Yes, sir. Number three, what do you say? That's right. Uh, number two, what caliber revolver does a New York policeman carry? A 38 revolver, usually. That's it. It's time to vote now, panel. Without any consultation, please, will you mark your ballots? And in doing so, select number one, number two, or number three. Now, remember that the team of challengers will receive $250 for each and every incorrect vote. Of course, that means that if they defeat the entire panel, uh, they can then divide $1,000. All right, panel, have you marked your ballots? You haven't? Yes. All right. Polly Bergen, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. And why, Polly? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know I should have an answer, but I really don't. <laughs> because I did, you know, I thought it was number one, then I was sure it was number two, and then I thought it was number three, and so I just said to heck with it, and I voted for number one. <laughs> John, who did you vote for? Number two. And what was your reason, John? I loved that story about the boat, but... <laughs> Kitty Carlisle, you voted for? Number two. And what was your reason? I thought number two held herself rather like a model. <laughs> and that brings us to High Gardner. You voted for what? I voted for number three. Uh-huh. And your reason was? Well, if uh, Messi doesn't tell Gimble, why should I tell you? But I will. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the reason I voted for number three is that I asked uh, all three girls who Charlie Eckhouse was. And since he happens to sign the checks and he runs Gimble's, I thought that uh, number three might be the one. They're paid in cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but somebody has to sign a check before you can get cash, even shoplifters. Well, <laughs> I don't think anybody ever paid a shoplifter with a check. In any event... Uh, let's find out now. Our minds are all made up. We hope yours are, too. If, if they are, don't change them now. Play right along with us. We're about to find out which one of these lovely people is Alice Carroll's store detective. So now, will the real Alice Carroll please stand up? Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Carroll. Now, let's find out about the others. Number one, who are you really and what do you do? I'm a singer in musical comedy, and my name is Karen Ford. <laughs> Miss Ford, might I have seen you in something? What shows have you sung in? Yes, I've done roles in Kismet, uh, Guys and Dolls, Paint Your Wagon, Oklahoma. Well, <laughs> certainly have that. Number two, how about you? Who are you and what do you do? My name is Virginia Payne. I'm an actress, and I have played the role of Ma Perkins on CBS Radio for 24 years. And I might add, a very dear friend of mine, and I had to pretend like I didn't know her ever since she came to the theater. I also want to tell you another thing about Virginia Payne. In all those, how many years has Ma Perkins been on? It's nearly 24. In all that time, unless my knowledge is mistaken, and I think it's correct, Virginia, you have never missed one single performance, have you? That's right. That's something. Right. <laughs> well, you did run well. <laughs> Financially, that is. There were three incorrect votes worth $250 each, which means a grand total of $750 for you ladies to divide from Jarrett Hall. Please enjoy it. Accept our thanks and the best of good luck to you. Good night. You. Now may we have our next team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Robert W. Brown. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Robert W. Brown. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Robert W. Brown. 
Now, panel, will you follow along while I read this affidavit? I, Dr. Robert W. Brown, am a resident physician in a hospital in San Francisco, California. During the Korean War, I served as a first lieutenant in the Army Medical Corps. It took me six years to get through medical school since I attended classes only from October to April. From April to October each year, I played third base for the New York Yankees. I believe I am the only doctor in the country with a World Series batting average of 439. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Dr. Robert W. Brown. All right, on with our game. These three gentlemen all claim to be Dr. Bobby Brown, who was star third baseman for the New York Yankees. I remember only the real Dr. Bobby Brown is sworn to answer your questions truthfully. We'll start this round with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Number one, who discovered anesthesia? I don't know. Number two, who originated the smallpox vaccine? Dr. Fleming. Number three, who uh, discovered or invented streptomycin? I believe it was a group of doctors, I don't know their exact names, at Rutgers University. At Rutgers University? Yes, ma'am. Um, number one, your batting average is kind of wonderful. What about your medical average? Have you lost any patients? <laughs> I think all doctors have lost a few. <laughs> Not willingly, anyway. Hi, Gardner. Uh, number one, and please don't consider this a professional visit, but <laughs> if I had a pain in my lower right side, what would that indicate? It would indicate you'd probably better go see a doctor. <laughs> I ought to see a foot doctor. Every time I ask a question, I put my foot in it. Uh, what is Toots Shaw's first name, number one? I don't know. I've only known him as Toots. Uh, number... Polly Bergen. Sorry. Um, all I know is, you know, that these be, whichever one it is would be wonderful for my daughter, Kathy, because she hates doctors but loves baseball. <laughs> uh, number three, uh, it says in the affidavit that you were uh, playing baseball and studying medicine at the same time. Did you ever have a chance to help uh, a fellow player who was hurt? Honestly, believe me, the ball players would never let me touch them. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, could you tell me what is Demerol? Well, Demerol is a drug that induces sleep. It's used uh, uh, many times. To, uh, I see. Birth number of babies, three. For instance. Uh, what What is the medical phrase for for glandular fever? I do not know that answer. Number two, John Cameron Swayze. <laughs> number two, what year did you rack up this 439 in the series? Well, this was the average of the four series that I played in, in 47, 49, 50, and 51. Uh, give me very fast your batting average for the season each year. Well, it was a, I did better in the beginning, about 333 the first year in 46, and then I went Let's down to Let's drop it right there. Tell me what 333 means. How do you get that? Well, it's the number of hits divided by the number of at-bats. How many times, then, in 333 would you have to hit? How many times at bat? Can you give me that? The number That's all right. Who owns the Yankees today? Uh, Del Webb and Dan Topping. What is Del Webb? Kitty Carlisle. Number one, what are the duties of a first lieutenant in the medical corps? Well, they have a variety of duties. It depends on what type of assignment they're given by the Army. Well, I mean, when, when you're in actual combat, if there's a battle going on, what do you do? Well, if you're in combat and that's your assignment, you usually work in an aid station. That's it. Once again, it's time to vote, panel. So again, with no consulting, will you please mark your ballots? And select number one, number two, or number three. All marked, panel? Polly, you ready? All right, Polly Bergen, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two. Why? Well, uh, he sort of knew the definition of Demerol. Uh, he was almost too smart. It's probably number one, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you ever get the feeling I really know nothing about this game? <laughs> I think it's number two because just, he did know that definition. You're just fighting oh, yourself, that's all. <laughs> John Cameron Swayze. Number two. And what was your reason, John? I just like the looks of him as a ball player and as a doctor. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle? Number one. Uh, 
What was your reason? Well, number two said that, uh, that Fleming invented the smallpox right. vaccination. Is that right? No, it is not I didn't right. think it was right. I thought he invented penicillin. That's right. So I think number one looked more like the fellow that I was looking for. Well, thought out. <laughs> he may not have known you were, he was the fellow you were looking for, but in any event, hi, Gardner, your vote, please. I voted for one for the very same reason, Dr. Fleming. The same reason? The same the reason. Trip on Dr. Fleming. Fleming. All right, mm -hmm. there we are with our votes. How about yours now? Play fair and square with yourselves and have fun and don't change your mind because now we are going to find out which one of these persons is the real Dr. Bobby Brown. Will the real Dr. Brown please stand up? Thank you, Bobby, very much. Number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you really do? My name is Calvin D. McCracken. I'm an inventor and engineer and president of Jet Heat Incorporated, and I'm the New York State Squash Rackets champion. Now, I could be wrong again, but unless memory fails me once more, are you not also the, uh, a member of the Eastern doubles champion tennis team? Tennis, yes. Uh-huh. All right, let's get to number three now. Uh, this gentleman, number three, what is your name, please, and what do you do? My name is Lou Cusero. I work for the Business Affairs Office of NBC. I formerly played football with the New York Yankees and Columbia University. He didn't, he didn't just play football with Columbia University. He was All-American, 1948 or 9? Which was it, Dave? 48. 48. Gentlemen, let's see how uh, well you did now. There were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a grand total of $500 from Jared Hall for you to divide. Thank you very much. Hope you had fun being here. We did have you here. Good night. <laughs> now let's have our third team of challenges, please. What is your name, please? My name is Shirley Adams. What is your name, please? My name is Shirley Adams. What is your name, please? My name is Shirley Adams. All right, panel, will you follow along with your copy of the affidavit which I'm about to read to you now? I, Shirley Adams, am a stewardess for American Airlines. I regularly fly a nonstop run from Los Angeles to Chicago. My most important flight to date, however, was just two weeks ago when I worked as stewardess on the first cross-country flight of a commercial jet airliner. Our flight time from Seattle, Washington to Baltimore, Maryland was a record-breaking three hours and 48 minutes. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Now, we'll start our cross-examination in just... All right, panel, these three people all claim to be Shirley Adams, airline stewardess. Now, you again question till you hear the signal. May we start this round with the high gardener, hi? Huh? Well, number one, which Smith is president of American Airlines? C.R. Smith, Red Smith, or uh, shall we say Rex Smith? C.R. Smith is president, and Rex Smith is the uh, public relations man. Uh-huh. Uh, number two, who is Tom Sadler? Uh, Tom Settler is in, in charge of uh, public relations. Yeah, number two, also, uh, what do you do when a wolf makes a pass at you in a jet plane? Is it worse than when he makes a pass in an ordinary it's plane? It's a pretty fast uh, whistle, but I turn. Uh, number three, at what age do, at what age do uh, stewardesses have to retire? Number three, you direct Number three, yeah. Number three. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, 32. 32. Number one, at what age do they retire? At uh, 32 is the retirement age. Number two? Age. 32. Sneak. Polly Bergen. <laughs> Number one, why couldn't I be an airline stewardess? I don't see any reason why you couldn't be. Number two, why couldn't I be an airline You could be. Number three, you wear glasses. Uh, Sorry. Number one, could you tell me, um, whoops, uh, what uh, problem changed the landing plans of a jet airline? It was supposed to land in New York and had to land in Baltimore. Why? Well, mm -hmm. the weather was responsible for that. And, um... Also, the Baltimore airfield was a little bit more open at that moment. And uh, number three, could you tell me why? Because of the objection to the noise. Uh, number two, could you tell me uh, how old must you be to be an airline stewardess? 
Uh, you must be 20 years old. 20 years old. What? John Cameron Swayze. Now, my, number three, you normally fly into Chicago. Uh, yes, that's my... What's the name of the airport there? Midway. What is the street that takes you to Chicago proper from the airport? Air, C airport. Cicero. You go through Cicero. Is it on Cicero Avenue? Isn't there another one? Give me one more. 55th. Um, how did you learn to be a stewardess? I went to the training school for stewardess. And how long does that uh, last? That takes five weeks. How do you learn to... Ca Kitty Carlisle. Number three, I've always been impressed by the way you girls handle yourselves under most every situation. Well, thank you. How do you uh, handle it when some fresh guy tries to make a pest of himself? Well, you understand this happens very rarely. Uh, <laughs> but uh, on one occasion, I remember I was having difficulty in the aisle, so I flashed on the uh, fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> that took care of that. <laughs> and that worked. Number two, uh, is there any differences in stewardessing on a jet plane as opposed to an ordinary plane? I mean, the human equation is still the same, isn't it? No, there isn't any difference at all. It's the same. Time once again to vote, panel, so get set and mark your ballots. Marking them for number one, number two, or number three. Ballots marked? Oh, you got early on this one, Polly. For whom did you vote, Polly Bergen? I voted for number three. Huh? And why? Oh, uh, well, because she was the only one of the three who realized that wearing glasses, I wouldn't be allowed to be an airline stewardess. Huh. John? Number three, bud. <laughs> and your reason? Well, I like the uh, reason Polly gave about the glasses, and I also thought the story was almost too good to make up about passing your seat belts. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, your vote. Number three. And your reason, Kitty? Well, because all airline stewardesses are pretty, but this one is surpassingly beautiful. I? Well, I would have voted for all three, but I voted for number one. I thought number three was too pat about Chicago, and number one did know uh, the difference between the three Smiths. Huh? All right, there you have the balloting and the reasons. Now, whatever your reasons, as I said before, don't change. Have fun as we find out now which one of these three lovely ladies is the real airline stewardess. Will the real Shirley Adams please stand? Twenty forty is fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there we are. Let's take a quick look now and see how well they did. And the panel is going to groan a bit, but the challenge is no. because you fooled them completely. That means a total of one thousand dollars from Jared Hall for you to divide. Happy flying to you. Good night, ladies, thank and thank you, you for being with us tonight. Good, good night. night. Oh, I gotta hurry up here. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I didn't find out who the others were. I was getting the old speech up there, and I plunged right ahead and dismissed you, awarding you money and everything. Forgive me. That was my oversight, and I'm sorry. Number one, suppose you tell us who you really are. Well, my name is Joan Crosby, and I do public relations for the New York Giants with the firm of Art Flynn Associates. <laughs> And remember. number three, who got all the voting, uh, who are you really? Uh, my name is Clarice Fancher, and I'm a freelance magazine writer. <laughs> Again, I thank you, and I'm sorry I nearly missed up on finding out who you were. I wouldn't want to miss that for the world. And enjoy your $1,000 from Jared Hall. Good night <laughs> again, you. and God bless you. <laughs> Well, it looks to me like that's just about all the time we have for tonight, so I'm going to have to stop real short and say good night, panel. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, and in the meantime, until next week, this is Bud Collier reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Travel arrangements for to tell the truth are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships.